Welcome to The Popish Plot. I'm Mike. I'm Jessica. And I'm Nate. This is the final four, Judgment, Defending Your Life. That's right. Now, now this, was a, this movie did fairly well at the time that it came out, but mm-hmm. it's one of those movies that it, it didn't make like a, for a really large cult following, so... It might not be something, it might be something that if you are older, you might remember. Well, so far we're only doing movies from the 80s. Yeah. So most likely, they're definitely skewing older. I'm done, but yes. I'm just saying, it, it's not going to be something that, that many people may necessarily have heard of. It, it, Fair. It, it's more of a deep cut. So Defending Your Life is a fantastic film from the late 80s, 86. Seven or eighty nine, somewhere around. Somewhere there. around. Yes, there. we had to rent it from the library because when we were doing movies, we all are like, there was that film in the eighties, and they were all dressed in like white outfits. Yep. <laughs> well, plus I, I get there, there's not a lot of films about this topic of you know, judgment after death. Hmm. Mm-hmm. People don't want to watch things about having to be judged. No, because that pricks the hole into the theory that everybody goes to heaven. Because after all, we're all good people. That's true. It's true. I'm I not mean, Hitler. They, they did turn I don't it, kick puppies. They did turn it into a rom-com. It wasn't like yeah. it was a, a dramatic thing. No, <laughs> it, it, it definitely skewed rom-com. <laughs> so, the, the, the essential premise of Defending Your Life is that when you die, you go to Judgment City. Well, at least you go for to, the people in the western United States. You go well, to a regional. judgment yes. city. They, they yes. were regional. Yes. And, 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 we know they're yeah. the regional. We never see any of the others. So they might have different names. But yeah, I'm betting, like Nate, they're all franchises. They're all judgment city. Where the, the, the recently dead, the little brains. The little brains. <laughs> have to defend their lives before a panel of, of, of enlightened individuals who refer to themselves as big brains. And the reason that they do this is because supposedly the more enlightened you are, the more of your brain that you actually use. Whereas those lesser enlightened individuals might actually use a very small portion of their brain. So the, the commonly repeated trope that uh, the average person only uses 10% of their brain, which, which while true in the moment, doesn't hold up because we now know, you know with our various brain scan abilities... That you're using different parts of your brain all the time. So you may only be using 10% at any one moment, yes. but it's constantly moving yes. about. Theoretically, yes. at this moment in time, I am using 10% of my total brain. However, mm-hmm. it's any unless as long as I don't have portions of my brain that are actually uh, damaged to the point of, of, of non-functioning, mm-hmm. I use all of my brain over the course of a length of time. Yeah. Yes, so. also, the, the, the biggest brain does not correlate with the most smart anyway. Like, when they say Einstein's brain, he was average size for a male. He just mm-hmm. had a lot more neuron connections. Mm-hmm. And although it's a very flawed system for IQ, the highest IQs are usually females who have slightly yep. smaller brains. Yep. So it's all about how many connections you have, oh, not yep. how big. Well, yeah. and in fairness, <laughs> and in fairness um, it doesn't really track all that well in this movie either because no. <laughs> all of the people who are supposedly big brains are also outrageously conceited, uh, self-centered. They got a real pride problem. Well, it was the 80s. It was. Like it's it, it's 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 oh. like a yuppie it's like a yuppie Buddhist <laughs> fantasy. It's hell. Well, now of course well, they needed elements. more. They needed more tiny mustards. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I remember about you know the height of yuppieism the, was how many tiny mustards you had in your fridge and how often you eat at Spoggle. Yeah, <laughs> but so there, there again there are huge <laughs> philosophical problems with defending your life you know, being depending on how you're not trial. <laughs> But your hearing goes, your examination of your life, one of two things will happen. Either you will be sent back to Earth to try again a reincarnation, mm-hmm. or you'll be advanced and become more of a big brain. Yes. Now, you go through th- several stages. This is, of course, utter claptrap. Complete oh, yeah. nonsense. No, Malarkey nonsense. of the highest order. Mm-hmm. But there is still a nugget of truth in it, in that after death, whether you want to or not... You're going to be judged. You're going to be judged on how you behaved. Mm-hmm. You know how you acted. You know, mm-hmm. Faith without works is dead. Yeah. Well, the yeah. thing, not not just the things that you did, but why you did them. Mm-hmm. And similar to the, the fact that you watch on video screen 
scenes of your life from a third person perspective. Which would be so weird. So weird. Because like, I'm used to seeing the world this way. Mm. But you will be shown your life. Now, maybe that doesn't happen so much at the particular judgment, but it certainly will happen at the general judgment. You'll see everything and you'll understand everything. So you die, you then have to defend your life. Mm -hmm. You have to take a serious look at why you did the things you did. And interestingly, in this situation, lying does you no good. Yeah. And, and so each person uh, gets four days. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was different numbers no, for no. every person. No, 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 no. no. They each got four days during which the hearing okay. would take place. But they went and they took a select number of moments from your life that, that, that your defense was going to use to prove that you, in fact, uh, and, and this is where it gets a little weird, uh, did not operate out of fear. Mm -hmm. while, while the prosecution, if you will, they're not really trying to prosecute. They're mostly just trying to, deter, trying to prove that perhaps you might not be ready for big brain status yet. And the judges aren't really judges. It's it's a weird thing. Yeah. yeah. But they're going to use to prove that you, in fact, uh, operated right. out of... Uh, so you operated significantly out of a fear motivation. Yep. Which was something that, when we were first watching it, we're like, all right, so according to this, all sociopaths are, you know, big brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because they, they don't tend to be afraid of things. They're, they're, they have a problem in their brain, which makes them incapable of experiencing fear. Yeah, according to, <laughs> according according to uh, according to this model, uh, evil Knievel is quite potentially a, a, a absolute saint. Not to suggest that he's not, but I, 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 I haven't I haven't ex I haven't examined anything enough to, wear, to weigh weird. in on that. <laughs> it's not our, it's not our to judge anyway. But the but the fact that he was willing to go flying through the air <laughs> on a motorcycle when. Definite harm to his body, and in fact, potential mm -hmm. potential permanent harm to his life, were always on the line. Is not what I would think we should be the criteria for determining that he is a saint. <laughs> Certainly not. If anything, he would be a saint in spite of his career. <laughs> yes. But so, at first, I thought this was an extremely odd criteria, mm -hmm. fitting in with the general, you know, reincarnation, new age vibe of the entire thing. The, the, the film is clearly not at all concerned about pride. All the big brains are extremely prideful. It's extremely. Um, it doesn't care a whit about um, sexual morality. Because even in the afterlife, people are still trying to hook up. Yeah. It's, it's all about whether or not you have overcome fear. Which at first, okay, that's a really, that's a really weird and jacked up criterion. And it is. But there is, even in that, an element of truth. Because Jesus Christ is the truth, so anything that's even remotely true speaks of him. Okay. I thought about the parable of the talents. Where you know, some are given more, some are given less. The master goes away, they're told to invest and make more. First servant comes back and says, you gave me five, I made five more. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Here, look, I have five cities. Next guy, you gave me two, I made two more. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You get two cities. Third guy comes. I didn't do Jack. I was really scared. So <laughs> I knew that you were like a hard boss. So and you were I probably going to beat me if I didn't do a good job. So I uh, I just stuck it in the ground. I buried. I, I dug a hole. <laughs> and then I dug it up. And here it is. And the boss says it's a little tarnished, you... but but they'll they'll they'll, 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 they'll polish it. buff right out. <laughs> you wicked servant. You could have at least put it in the bank. And made me some interest. There's more to the life of holiness than just bravery. Than just overcoming fear. But an essential element is overcoming fear. Because if I'm so afraid of losing the little I've been given. That I just clutch it. I'm definitely going to lose it. Yeah. Whereas if I venture it. I could produce much, much more. Hmm? Yes, and I also, on watching the show and then thinking about it a bit, mm -hmm. had something that at first I, I was like, this is totally stupid. But then as I thought about it, it does more relate to real life. Because to me. The idea is that if you die as a child, you automatically, you don't have this judgment. You, yep. you go to the next level. Yeah. But then at the main character's 
thing, they show multiple instances of things that happened when he was a small child to prove whether or not he was, you know, fearless enough to go on. Yeah, and first like, wait, wait you said you didn't talk about it. <laughs> yeah, none of this should count. All these count as void. However, mm-hmm. in real life, mm-hmm. although you can't control what happens to you as a child, mm-hmm. how it, it, it makes you react and deal with things is something that has lasting implications on the rest of your life. So therefore, those events can then have a positive or a negative effect yep. for your actual adulthood and therefore your, your you know judgment. Yeah. Even though, of course, even little kids will be judged, but based on the fact that they're little kids. Yeah. You have to judge them by their <laughs> capabilities at the time. No, you're absolutely right. So, so a thing I found, please, that kind of kind of tracks <laughs> with 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 what I think one could expect of heaven. So. Every place he goes to eat, mm-hmm. it's the best eat food he's ever had. It's the best, whatever it is that and they he make. Seem to be in the best part of Judgment City. <laughs> no, but but whatever it is that they make, they make the best <laughs> there is of that thing. You have pancakes, best pancakes you've ever had, and there is never any shortage of it. Nope. You can eat massive quantities. Now, I could totally see this sort of fitting in to heaven. Mm-hmm. In that, it, the things that are good mm-hmm. that we will want will not only be good things, mm-hmm. but they will have been perfected good things. So therefore, they will be the best of that thing that could ever be imagined. Well, I, I'm reminded of, you know, I know you're a big fan of The Great Divorce. Mm-hmm. In there, the, the blades of grass in heaven are so real that they cut the feet yeah. of the damned. Yeah. Because it's it's so much more real, so much more actualized than any grass we experience. And the damned and, and the purgatorios. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. But yeah, and at the same time, uh, there will be no want mm-hmm. in heaven. Therefore, there's only abundance. There will only be abundance. Now, there is a little bit of a fault in it, though, in that everybody there wants to, is totally willing to give you, like, doggy bags. Mm-hmm. And so I find it a little bags. weird. You're only in town Here, for four. Have eight pies. You're only in town for four days. But 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 and if, if surplus if the or not surplus but if supply is such that there that you that it's not like you'll ever run out. Why do you even need the donkey bag? Well, if you really if if you really enjoy it, yeah, and, and you have to go, mm-hmm. go. When you come back. It'll be there. <laughs> It'll be there. But think of how think of <coughs> you may never come back to that particular place. You may not. Think of how extravagant God is with us. He gives us more grace than we need. He's always giving us a doggy bag. He's always giving us eight pies. Why? Because I like you. It's always it's more than we could possibly use. We and we use so little of it. Yeah. We could have all the pies. We all the holy pies. pies. Instead, we settle for all the actual pies, which are ultimately not satisfying. I always said, there's always room for pie, mm-hmm. until I was at an event where um, there, were, there were a variety of pies, and then at the end, we were trying to get rid of them. And so I thought, hey, there's always room for pie. I discovered, from practical experience, pie is no longer enjoyable from the fifth piece. Yeah. At that point, like, I'm not having fun. <laughs> Whereas heavenly pie, you can totally eat eight pies, but you wouldn't. I mean, you you, you could, and you might. <laughs> you but, might, but but but, you but, might. but practically speaking, <laughs> more often than not, it probably more, wouldn't. No, no, it's just, it's more than we need. Yeah, God gives us more than we could use. He, he would give you if he gave you eight pies. Yeah, it'd be because those eight pies were like however much pie you needed, mm-hmm. but divided into eight smaller pieces. <laughs> So, in this life, when you have an opportunity to invest in Casio, do it. Yeah. <laughs> Not meaning actual investments, but when or you actual have, Casio. Or, but when you have a chance to have Who a conversation knows? with somebody, Weird things have made comebacks. <laughs> there you go. Do it. When you have a when you have a chance to share the faith with someone, do step it. Step out. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, Albert the Albert Brooks character almost gets sent back because he's. All cringing and fearful. But then he finally discovers his courage, his bravery, and he upsets the whole apple cart. Yeah. So, 
in your faith. Step out bravely. Don't bury your talent. God has given you more than you know. You're walking around with doggy bags and extra pies. <laughs> Use them. Also, you're going to be judged. Yes. That's it. That just, <laughs> that really is, that's, that that's really the, long is the point you have that's to take away from this. this. You may not want to be, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Everybody ends up in Judgment City. It, but the ben- uh, one more good thing, one, one more point to yeah. make. Pie. Yes, everybody was getting judged. Mm-hmm. And there were some people who felt very good about the way that their judgment was going. Yep. And there were some people who felt very not good about the way their judgment was going. Yep. In real judgment, while there might be people who don't necessarily like the way their judgment is going, mm-hmm. they won't disagree with how their judgment is going. Because this is the true and just judge. It's not. It's not. You're being punished, and you don't understand why. It's here is the road that you've chosen, and you say, "Yeah, that's the road I chose." You know, even even the uh, the rich man. You know, after he doesn't get his drink from Lazarus, he's like, "Okay, I'm stuck here. At least go warn my brothers. Yeah, this place is not good. They should not come here." Maybe it had the comedians from this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, guy, that, that comedian was awful. bad. <laughs> Uh, whereas, whereas, if there are comedians again, now this is this is heaven. But if there are comedians in the afterlife, they're hilarious. They're the best. They're the best. Can you imagine how funny Philip Neary is? Like he was mm. funny in life. Now in afterlife, holy smokes! I'm hmm. just Pedro Saint of Clowns. I'm just imagining all the, the the you know physical gags you can do when you know you, you you can be like okay I want my head over there my body there <laughs> magic show's gonna be super boring though we'll all know the trick <laughs> you're my <bi> locating <laughs> so comment below on whether or not you feel judged or, or whether or not you think we picked a good movie for for judgment maybe you think there was a better one out there. Maybe we picked a movie you've never heard of, which I'm willing to believe there's at least one person out there who's like, I've never heard of that movie. But uh, despite the, the many problems with it, there is no such thing as reincarnation, we still recommend it. It was a fun movie to watch. Mm-hmm. Especially so, if you look at it with a critical mind and, and, the, and you then get to see all the things where it's like, well, that's not right. Well, that's not right. Well, that's BS. That's, <laughs> on, the, on the plus How side. How exactly do they expect this world to work? <laughs> but on the plus side, Rip Torn. Rip Torn. Okay. So, <laughs> Give this episode a like, subscribe to our channel, ring the church bell to be notified the next time we talk about one of the four last, the last four things. And until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. Share that love. love.